Hi everyone. What I'm going to talk about today is a lesson I just learned that saved me a tremendous amount of time on a recent project I had. I had a client who gave me a graduation ceremony and I was supposed to get a video file that had all of the names of the students getting their diploma. It was like a lower third that would come up on the bottom of the screen. Well, something happened on the day of the shoot and that file, that video file, wasn't created and so the client handed me the graduation ceremony and said can you create, basically, we need you to create the lower thirds for all the students. There were 700 students, and the thought of creating 700 different lower thirds was rather daunting. And so I went looking, and I found a tutorial at premierepro.net. Let me say that again, premierepro.net, because they are the ones uh, who gave me this tutorial to, sh uh, to, to do this work. And I take no credit for coming up with this, you know, I did not come up with it, I did not figure it out. I am just sharing it with you because it is pure genius. I didn't know this could be done. I was using things in Photoshop I didn't even know existed. Granted, I'm not an expert at Photoshop, but it basically was able to allow me to do what would have been weeks worth of work, I think, in about two days. So let's start. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I've already created a lower third template and let me find it right here. It should be on my desktop. Empty plate. And there it is. So I'm going to do something kind of basic. You can do something a little bit more advanced than this. Um, and if you go to the Premier, uh, premierepro.net website, the tutorial that you can download from them actually goes into more in depth and a little bit more complicated lower third but for the sake of this tutorial I just want to show you if you had to create one you know create one with the name and a title for somebody but you can have more information to to throw in there so so I've got this I've got my name and I've got my title you can see over here it's just some text layers and a background layer for the blue a gradient there so the first thing I want to do is create an Excel spreadsheet with all of the names so here we've got our Excel spreadsheet and you can see here that I've got name and then a list of names and a title and a list of titles. I am not an Excel spreadsheet expert. That's my wife's job in this house, in the Addison household. But, uh, you know, this is pretty basic to make. I'm only doing it with nine names in this tutorial just because I want it to go rather quick. Um, but as I said, when I did this for the client, I had uh, a list of 700 names. Well, it was actually 369, 315, and then another one that was around 97. There's three different lists. Uh, but anyway, so here's our list of names. The important thing that you want to do is when you save, if, if they just give you an Excel spreadsheet, um, you know, what, one thing that I found that I needed to do is I took the Excel spreadsheet, I customized it to the way that it needed to be so that I had name, title. If you have another category in your lower third, um, you know, you would have that here and then all the stuff for your different people here. What I find you need to do is do a save as and then do a save it as a CSV with the comma delimited. That was the key. Once I did that, everything seemed to work. So make sure you save it that way. I don't know exactly what CVS or CSV stands for. I'm not exactly sure what comma delimited stands for. Again, not an Excel person, but that's what worked. So. I've already saved this file as that, so let's just say no. Let's go back over into Photoshop. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into Image, Variables, Define. And here's where we'll set up everything. So you can see right here we're going to define the layer. So layer for title. I'm going to replace that with title. And again, we want it to match from our Excel file. And then I want the name to replace with the, everything in the name column. So we'll click OK. Actually, we'll click Next. Now, uh, so we click Next. And the next thing we need to do is load in and associate this with that Excel file. So I'm going to click Import here. I'm going to select the file and I want to make sure both these boxes are checked. Select the file and it wants to look for a text file. I'm going to change it to CSV. There it is. Click OK. And you can see we've, uh, we've got it going here. So I'm going to click OK. 
last step, come over to File, Export, Data Sets as Files. We'll click on that. I'm going to select my folder here. I've got a folder already created on the desktop. Let's find it. It should be called Lower Thirds. There it is. Now, here's one little thing I wanted to say. When I did this the first time, you can create a, uh, a prefix before your file name because it'll save each file as the name. And the first time I did it, I didn't set a, uh, any sort of prefix. So it was just the names. Big mistake. I wanted. I added. Went back and added a number. Once I did that, it made my life so much easier. Now you may not need a number for what you're doing. You the names just may be fine for you. But you know, in the case of my project where I had a group of students. Um, the, and, the, and the order on the Excel spreadsheet was the order in which they came up on stage to get the diploma. I needed the number so that I could then just you know drop them in in order and it made life a lot easier. So I'm going to leave the number prefix on there, but this is where you can change that and, and you can set up how you want the files to be. Um, so basically once I click OK, you can see it's working and it should be done here relatively quick. Yep, we're done. So now, if I go here into my lower thirds folder, you can see there they all are. And uh, let me open up Bridge real fast, and we'll just take a look at them so you can actually see that it actually made them, and kept all that information. So uh, let's go Desktop. All right, so here's Desktop and lower thirds, and there they all are. Now, the one thing to keep in mind about this, and I found this out the hard way, was that what happened was when I tried to bring these into Premiere, because it's three separate layers, Premiere wants to know how do you want to bring these in. It gives you the, the little dialog box and to bring them in, you know, and I needed to bring them in as merged layers. And I had to do that for 300 however many times when I brought it in. I was clicking the enter button. So what you may want to do is do a batch convert to all of these Photoshop files and convert them to PNG files, which was what recommended to me because that will uh, preserve the transparency, but it'll flatten the layer and you can then bring that in to Premiere. So that would be one way to go that was recommended to me, of course, after the fact. But either way, I didn't care hitting that little enter button 300 and however many times because, you know what, it was about a minute and a half of that or whatever, and that was a lot less time than it would have taken to make all of these. Anyway, so that's the tutorial. That's how to do it. That's the quick and easy way to do it. Um, you know, it, obviously, like I said, go to premierepro.net, download the tutorial there. It's genius. Those guys are geniuses. Download the tutorial to get more information, get a little bit more in depth. This is just a real basic overview, but I hope it helps someone out there because I know it sure helped me. So thank you, premierepro.net, and we'll see you next time.